punch it. What's up, everybody? We got a brand new podcast, me and Arvine. How you doing, Arvine? I'm good. You just found me on the streets and brought me into the car. Yeah, this is the brand new podcast, everybody. This is the Punch It Podcast, where me and Arvine just talk about random uh, Star Wars, Marvel, and DC things, and other things we like. Yeah, it's Should perfect. be good. And we just got out of the... Th- we're literally in the parking lot of a of cinema. a movie theater with a laptop and a microphone. Yeah, we're lit- we just saw uh, Birds of Prey. We're going to get the cops on us. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, Arvin, how, what did you think of Birds of Prey? Um, I thought it was very good. Um, it wasn't one of the best movies that came out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, first, honestly, first movie I've seen in 2020. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a good first impression for the year. Um, not not too long. And, you know, no character doesn't overstay their welcome. Now let's not get into spoilers until we get into spoilers. Right now yeah. we're still out of spoilers. Spoiler free yeah. review. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, um, Birds of Prey. It was. I mean, Harley Quinn was good. Margot Robbie does a very good job. Yeah, uh, she was one of the best choices to play that character. And she, was she better in this movie or Suicide Squad? What do you think? That's kind of tough because I haven't watched Suicide Squad in about two years. Me uh, too. I'm gonna say this one for now because. <laughs> Um, Suicide Squad was Ugh. It was not a great film. Not at all. And it kind of gave... The problem with Suicide Squad for me was, like, mm-hmm. it jumped from character to character. It really no, did. No one character got their own, like, screen time other than, like, El Diablo. And it was more than anything to set up his sacrifice at the end. True. And you know how, like, in Suicide Squad, they, like, introduce, like, character, and they have, like, it's yeah, Captain Boomerang. Like I'm they, being they, honest. This is... A slight spoiler for Birds of Prey. They did that in this movie. Yeah. But they did it better in, yeah. than in Suicide it had, Squad. It had the Suicide Squad style. Yeah. But more stylish, if that makes sense. Well, like, there was a lot of things going on in Suicide Squad. I'd say it's more, like, centralized and, like, more organized than how they use the style. Absolutely. In yeah. Birds of Prey. Because Suicide Squad was just, like, it was edited by people who edit trailers. Mm-hmm. So, like, every five minutes, there's, like, a new song that everybody loves. Like, Bohemian Rhapsody just comes yeah. out of nowhere. It's like, what the hell? This doesn't fit the vibe at all. Yeah. So. Um, there are references in this movie, or at least one that I got to actually see, mm-hmm. um, to Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. We don't want to spoil who, what that was until we get into spoilers. But, yeah. yeah. Let's, go by, let's go by character, though. Mm-hmm. What did you... So, Harley Quinn was good. Yeah. I, I liked Harley Quinn. She was good. Uh, I didn't like her outfits in this movie. I can understand that. I thought they were okay. I think she needed more black and red, personally. Yeah. But um, she just looked like she was going to Coachella the entire movie. <laughs> you know? Just a little bit. You know? She, I mean, she did... Uh, si- slight spoiler. She did break up with the Joker. But that's yeah, that's, in, that's the trailer, in the trailer. So, yeah. She was good. Um, yeah. Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn. Um, wonderful casting there. Mm-hmm. And um, just so... Everything Harley does, except for one thing, is really in character for her. Is the, is the one thing in spoilers? Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll get that. In, we'll get there in a bit. Uh, okay, Black Canary. What did you think? Uh, I really liked her. She was good. Mm-hmm. Um, a kind of interesting, like the position she's in when we first see her in the film. Mm. Um, it kind of makes you like wonder how she got there, which I kind of wish they elaborated more on that. Yeah, it's true. But like. Um, didn't take away from the character. I still think that, again, they really captured the essence of who the character is in the comics. Mm. And um, the one main problem I had was that nose ring she had. Yeah, I didn't like the nose ring. If she, call, if people call that a spoiler, then that's not. She spoiler. has a fucking nose ring. Get over yeah, it. Yeah, it's just the nose ring. It's not a big deal. Um, Huntress. Um, again, I'm. I'm just gonna say this about all the characters to, to avoid repeating myself. Mm. Um, Every uh, character in this movie is comic accurate. For um, the most part, yeah. Like, their backstories are still... Can be interesting for, like, mm-hmm. uh, the sequel to this movie, because... I wonder if they will make a sequel. I hope they will, um, because there is one character missing from the Birds of Prey. That's true. And this is not a spoiler. Oracle, also known as Barbara Gordon. Or Batgirl. Batgirl. She does not appear in the movie. Um, so, yeah. Uh, every character did really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, great casting. Costumes are... Oh, wait. What did you think about Black Mask? 
Should we get into spoilers? If if we get into spoilers, there's going to be a bit of a rant. <laughs> All right, we're going to go into spoilers, guys. Uh, skip to the time code to avoid spoilers for Birds of Prey. So, Black Mask yes. fucking dies at the end. Yeah. I mean, his death was pretty fun, though. It was fun, but here's the thing. In my opinion, Black Mask is one of the most underrated villains in comics. Sure. And uh, they had so much potential. And they had Ewan McGregor, of all people, to do Black Mask. He's been in, like, everything recently. He's been in uh, Doctor Sleep, the Shining sequel. He's been in Christopher Robin, that Winnie the Pooh movie. And um, he's going to be in Kenobi again. Yeah, he's going to be on that Disney Plus. And now he's in this? I mean, he's everywhere. Yeah, they got uh, Ewan McGregor to do Black Mask, who was personally... Uh, one of my favorite villains in DC. And um, how, he wears the mask for like five minutes. He wears the mask for about five or ten minutes in the yeah. whole movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he kind of shouts the whole movie. Yeah, but I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm all right with that. Yeah, that's okay. Um, and it was hinted that he was bisexual, maybe yeah, gay with uh, Victor that, Zaz. That really... That bothered I, you? I didn't... It didn't bother me so much as like... <clears throat> I didn't know how to feel about it because yeah. like... In the comics, he doesn't even look at women. He doesn't look at women or men. He just doesn't care. He's yeah. just this serious yeah. figure who only cares about his money. True, but he like he yelled at some girl in his club. Yeah, but, and ordered her to strip. Yeah, but he wasn't like doing it because he was interested in her sexually. He just did it to humiliate her because he or was annoying. She was annoying him. Establish her power, his power. Yeah, it's true. Um, just. Uh, they had Ewan McGregor, and they had one of the coolest comic villains, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And what really bothers me is that they may be doing Red Hood. They've teased it a couple times. True. Uh, in the DCEU. And if you read the comics, you know that Red Hood and Black Mask have a rivalry. Yeah, a little bit. But it's not like... You can't... You can do Red Hood without Black Mask. You don't need you to can, have it. You can, but... Like, I really kind of wanted to see the rivalry on screen. Yeah. Like, on a big I mean, screen. you already have Batman under the Red Hood to watch to see that but I know what you mean making me think of movies I want to watch I hate you (laughs) Victor Zaz were you a fan Uh, Victor Zaz did really good Mm -hmm. Um, he could again spoilers he could still be alive could be yeah he was shot Um, in the neck he was shot in the neck by an arrow and then stabbed by the tranquil tranquil by Harley yeah he could still be alive yeah but maybe he'll be in Suicide Squad yeah um, we can they could do that talk about that on another episode oh sure yeah our predictions, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, Cassandra Kane. She, for me, she didn't really act like comic book Cassandra Kane. She kind of just acted like a little yeah. brat the entire time. Um, one thing I did forget to say about Black Mask. Um, in this, he seemed a bit more unhinged. Yeah. Than the normal Black Mask, because normal Black Mask in the comics, he's like serious, he's calm this and big collected. Figure. Yeah. yeah. And this Black Mask, he's like getting injections in his head and like screaming. True. And. At one point, he does cry, which kind of surprised that was, me. Yeah, but they're doing, like, something new with him, which is okay, yeah. because yeah, he's I'm not a open, well-known character. Yeah, I'm open to new ideas. It's yeah. an interpretation, and obviously, you got to tweak the character. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't have a problem with it. My one problem, when they fucking killed him. It was it was kind of, like, anticlimactic the way they did it, too, because, like, yeah. Cassandra's like, I have your ring, Harley, and she's like, what? And then she pulls out a grenade pin and pins it yeah. to Black Mask, and then she's like, oh, no, and then kicks him off the bridge, or then, off the pier, and then... And then he just explodes and dies. You know what they were having? Um, pier shenanigans. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> We're never doing it again. GTA. Pier shenanigans. It's a YouTube video Arvin has on his YouTube From channel. Long, long ago. Yep. Classic. Classic, yes. Um... <laughs> So yeah, um, yeah. So we done talking about Birds of Prey. Or what do you think? Uh, I guess like we could talk about the plot. Okay, yeah. So the plot is um, and like the humor. We can go deeper into it. How much humor? W- I feel like there was humor in this movie, but it didn't really like land, land like resonate with people. You know? Yeah. Uh, Nobody laughed I, in our theater except for when Black Mass died. Yeah. That's the only time I remember anyone laughing. And one thing I will say about this. The ending jokes with, like, the whole th- central plot of the movie of fucking spoilers. I don't care anymore. Well, yeah, we're in spoilers. Basically, uh, Cassandra Kane steals a diamond from Black Mask, and to mm. hide it from the police when she inevitably inevitably gets arrested, mm. she swallows it. Yeah. 
And then at the end, I'm just like... She goes to the toilet? Yeah. Yeah. And I hate, I hate fucking Poop toilet jokes. humor. <laughs> I'm sick of fucking toilet humor. I'm they could have had, like... The movies are, and yeah. it has a fucking toilet humor. Yeah, but they could have had, like, a horrible, like, Ace Ventura moment, or, like, Dumb and Dumber moment, where, like, she's on the toilet just farting every all, everywhere, like... I, I wouldn't... They could have done that and made it horrible, but they didn't. I, yeah, it could have been... Or, you know, the Batmobile scene from Batman and Harley Quinn. Oh, yeah. They could have done that, so they thank you. Done that. Thank you for not doing that. Mm. Um, I would have bleached my eyes if I saw that in real life. <laughs> yeah. Would have ruined my image of Margot Robbie. True. But, um... What it, now here's a here's a, a topic we can discuss about this movie, feminism. Oh God, the thing I hate the most. Did you feel like this movie was cramming an agenda down your neck? At some moments, not all moments. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, it felt organic. Like these characters are yeah. who they are, and like the birds of prey aren't like an overtly for, feminist. Yeah, for thing. me, it was a bit ambiguous. Like at the end. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Like, oh yeah. Uh, Black Mask basically hires this army to get Cassandra Cain and kill everybody else. True. And all his guys are like men, and I guess that can be seen as that way. If Maybe. If you really want to look at it that yeah, way. Yeah, if you have like an agenda or something. Yeah. But Everybody's got a fucking agenda now. It's true. Our agenda is we have no agenda. Yeah. That's our agenda. I'm just an agent of fucking chaos. Epic. That'll, that'll bring us to our next segment. <laughs> oh yeah, the Joker. Okay. Well, um, well, let's let's wrap up Birds of Prey first. So, um, Grant, mm-hmm. final verdict: Birds of Prey. Uh, uh, give it a letter grade and then a number. Okay. So, Birds of Prey was fine, honestly. In re- because I just saw it, I always rate movies higher than like in retrospect. They usually yeah. go lower, mm-hmm. but for, for right now, I will give Birds of Prey an eight out of ten, a yeah. B minus. Uh, my ratings always seem to stick, mm-hmm. uh, even with retrospect. Um, I also give Birds of Prey an 8 out of 10, uh, B and minus, uh, go out, support this film, um, sure, you know, it's, it's worth your time if, you know, you enjoy the comics, if you like Harley Quinn, yeah, if you like Harley Quinn, the DCU, Mm -hmm. and all that, um, go out, support the movie. It's true, but like, this movie had like no hype for it. This movie had the least hype. Out of all the DC movies. This is weird. Like Aquaman had more hype because they were holding the trailer for so long. And that movie was like, had like, it was like two, $250 million yeah. budget. Or it was, it was $250 million in the budget. So they, um, it had to make money. They, they could have hyped this movie up way more. They could have, but they didn't for some reason. But yeah, it was, it was a fun film. It was I fun. It. Yeah. I recommend it. Go out and see it. You'll have fun. Or don't. It's your life. Yeah. We don't give a fuck. Yeah, we, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Arvin, the Oscars are tomorrow. Yes. Are you excited? Today is Saturday the 8th. Yep, February 6th, 11th. Oh my gosh, you're really dating this <laughs> podcast. Um, Yeah. How? Okay, so Oscars. how many movies have you seen in 2019? Let me get the list. Okay, I'm getting the list. I've seen a lot of movies. Do you think you've seen more than me? I seriously fucking doubt that. <laughs> yeah. You watch. T- you have too much free time, Grant. <laughs> yeah. You have a girlfriend. I should be the one without free time. <laughs> I'm single. What do you think I do with my girlfriend? I watch movies. God fucking damn it. <laughs> I've watched 17 movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first movie I saw in 2019 was Dragon Ball Super Broly. Okay. And the last movie I saw in 2019 was Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Wow. So 17? Uh, yeah. How many of you seen? Probably like 22. 64? Fucking hell. <laughs> did they all come out in 2019? Yes, they all did. But Fuck. I didn't watch them all in the theater. I okay. watched them on special websites. Uh, you pirated them. How dare you? <laughs> I do not pirate movies. That is a lie. I am not a pirate. Kiss cartoon? <laughs> Kiss. That's cartoon. That's for cartoons, though. I use AFTA. Come Man on. was watching fucking... Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> yeah, in the middle of anatomy, anatomy class. class. Yeah, I would do that. I'm On not ashamed. Cartoon, you can yeah. me? <laughs> I, would, I would do that as well. That's a fucking great show. All right, so let's go back to the list. Uh, is Goku your... Was the Goku movie your favorite movie of the year? Uh, it was... Uh, I have a separate list for this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Or it's Avengers. Um, so, according to my list, mm-hmm. um, my favorite movie of the year was... Um, Avengers Endgame. Um, okay. 
That's a good movie. Yeah, it was a fantastic movie. It, it speaks for itself. It's my favorite MCU movie. This had, like, the thing that clicked most with me about Endgame was this had 11 years in the making. True. They could not fail. They had the hype of the fans. And Infinity War. Yeah, and they had the whole world saying, if you fail, we're going to fucking kill you. True. And they didn't let, they let didn't anybody down. They made it as... They made it one of the best movies I've seen. Me too. I agree. And what was your least favorite movie of the year? Um. So before, yeah. Before I say it, uh-huh. let me just say, uh-huh. I'm a vi- I'm very ashamed that I watched this movie. <laughs> I only did it because I was wingmanning for a friend. Okay. What was it? Um, Tall Girl. <laughs> That's my least favorite movie of the year too. I that movie made me want to become an alcoholic. <laughs> Yeah, so I watched it with my girlfriend, and for some reason, I don't know why we watched it, but that literally made me go insane. That movie, it made me go insane. I started beginning. screaming, like, do not watch this movie. Tall Girl don't is on Netflix. Don't waste your fucking time, Netflix. It's horrible. Netflix, the fuck are you doing? Bird Box, now this shit, make something good for fuck's sake. Oh my sake. god, come on. Lucifer season five is coming. If they fail me there, I'm going to fucking kill them. I have to say, their shows are good. Netflix shows, for yeah, the most Netflix part, they're shows, pretty good. Yeah. But the first season four was great. Their movies are not hitting anymore. Their movies are atrocious. Look and at this is why Netflix this. is dying. Disney uh, who, put that's uh, Netflix is dying apparently, according to some people and Arvine. I, this should lead us to another episode where we talk about the streaming it's wars. Because, yeah, because we can talk about that in another episode. Yeah, because Netflix fuck. is dying, even though everybody has it. Mm-hmm. I don't see how it's dying, but we can ex- we can talk about that in another episode. But, um, yes. Tall girl was horrible. At the beginning when she's, like, listing off her problems, I'm wearing size 13 men's Nikes. Oh, that's so bad for you. There's <laughs> she, children not even... starving in Africa. Yeah. And you're over here whining and bitching about your <laughs> size 13 Nikes. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> she's made fun of because she's tall. She could step on her peers. She's pretty good looking, by the way. She's not ugly. I, I... I, I don't know. Much. Honestly, I was just zoned out because my buddy was there with a girl he was mm-hmm. really into. And I was just like, they, we were just like, hey, want to watch a movie at Arv's house? I'm like, fine, let's do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what are we watching? I've got Die Hard on DVD. I've had, I have Logan I have on John DVD. John Wick. I have John Wick. Come on. I have all three Rush Hour movies. <laughs> Money Talks. No, <laughs> we watch fucking Tall Girl. <laughs> was it her choice? It was her choice. Oh my gosh! And I only did it because I was wingman. You still owe me. You know who you are, and I know you're <laughs> watching this video. Mm. You still fucking owe me, man. That's, I swear to God. That's classic. <laughs> anyway. God fucking damn! I can't I wait. I don't even know how long that movie was. It felt. It was way too long. That's for sure. And, and it turns out, the man's basket was so he could get on it. And kiss the tall <laughs> girl. Oh yeah, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the bat, the basket was the Infinity Gauntlet. The Infinity. Yeah, it was the, the X. Mon- it was the um. Uh, what it was, was the MacGuffin. Of MacGuffin the movie. of the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> it was the Tesseract <laughs> of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it was the One Ring. Yeah. That move. That box, or crate, whatever the yeah. fuck it was. Mm-hmm. I don't remember because I, I don't care. Remember. I don't remember that movie. Was so important. It's basically the Infinity Stones, the MacGuffin. <laughs> It's so centrifugal to the plot. Mm-hmm. I want to fucking kill myself. I, even just thinking about this movie just pisses me off. All right, let's, 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 let's get out of Tall Girl. Give myself a brain tumor. So that was Tall Girl, the worst movie of the year that yeah. I saw. We did not... Let it be known that we did not see cats. Think fuck. I think that would have been worse. I think my brain could handle cats. But, yeah. $70 million they lost. Good. There's seventy million dollars in the hole. And they had Taylor Swift <laughs> and James Corden and Idris hey. Elba. What the hell? How Idris could you? Elba f- was in it. He was, yeah. And Jason Derulo. <laughs> like, what the hell were they doing? I don't know. Anyway, oh, let's get out of Cats. Is, let's get out of Tall Girl. Idris Elba, how could you do this to us? You were in Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> Hobbs and Shaw. In the Shaw. same year. It was actually really good for a Fast and Furious. Whatever. I don't care. I'm never gonna watch it. Good. Well, that's your choice. <laughs> to <man>. whatever. <laughs> We should Dude, talk about Fast and Furious in one episode. Okay, oh <laughs> let let me get to my top ten because I have a top ten list. Okay, so that's what I. I do. So number ten from 2019 movies that I saw from 2019. Number ten is Us. Okay. Did you 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 don't like scary movies? Uh, I'm us is good. Scary movies. Okay. I didn't, I didn't have time to see Us. Us is great. Okay. I loved Us. Yeah. Nine is Marriage Story. 
Okay. Scarlet. I, I still have yet to. It's on Netflix. That's the one where uh, Black Widow gets really angry with Kylo Ren, right? Yep. Okay, good. Great acting. They both got nominated. I think yeah. Adam Driver deserves it, and Scar yeah. Scar Jo, she's been nominated twice for this Oscars, for supporting actor and actress. Mm-hmm. I mean, wow, that's crazy. Anyway, Jojo Rabbit, the Nazi movie by Taika Waititi. Yeah. I still have to see that one. It's. I loved it. It's really good. Nine yeah. out of ten. Yeah. Um. This movie is called One Cut of the Dead. This is number seven. It's a Japanese movie. It's about... Okay, so picture this. These okay. guys are going out to make a zombie movie, okay. but then real zombies attack. Okay? Now, it sounds, sounds really like a, stupid. Sounds like a family guy plot. A little bit. But <laughs> imagine this. It's 30 minutes is one shot. No cuts. One shot. So they did the God of War method. Yes, it's okay. one long take. Yes, but... The movie's 90 minutes long. Mm-hmm. The first 30 minutes are just that part. But it turns out the whole thing was a faked live stream. So the rest of the movie is the Japanese people putting together the entire live stream and having to, like, stumble over each other to, like, put things together. It's, it's great. It's great. One Cut of the Dead is awesome. I recommend it. Everybody should go see it. Mm-hmm. Even though you, you have to read the movie because it's in Japanese. But whatever. Um, I already know what your number one is, you damn scumbag. I don't think you do. Six is Avengers Endgame. What? Yeah, number six. I saw a lot of movies. I saw 64 movies. I'm not going to be a basic Marvel fan and say That's Avengers is my favorite. Okay? You're calling me basic. I'll kick you out of I my car. I didn't call you basic. <laughs> but I saw 64 movies. I can't put Avengers over these other five. Okay? That's fair. Yeah. Um, Avengers is good. Um, number five is The Lighthouse. Robert okay. Pattinson. Willem Dafoe. Green okay. Goblin and Batman. Yep. This movie was insane. Uh, it's not for everybody. It's in black and white. It's in like a weird aspect ratio. It's about Willem Dafoe being crazy and Rob Pattinson almost going insane. So. So it's just about Batman and Green, Green Goblin. Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, number four is Midsummer. Midsummer was awesome. Florence Pugh, she's going to be in Black Widow. Okay. She is amazing. Um, I highly recommend Midsummer. It's about uh, this group of people go to a Swedish uh, uh, cult thing. And shit goes downhill. It's awesome. It's a horror movie. I recommend it. Um, number three is Little Women. I saw Little Woman. I didn't hate it. I loved it. So we got Little Women yeah. and a tall girl. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill myself. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I did not put that together. That was pretty funny. <laughs> That's gonna be the name of the of the episode: Little Woman and a Tall Girl, <laughs> featuring Birds of Prey review. You, you see, here's my main problem what you had a reason to watch it you, tall girl yeah you have a girlfriend you had a reason to watch it mm. okay she watched game of thrones for you which big ups to her i don't know her she but, liked it really not the ending but well yeah nobody likes the fucking yeah. ending. crippled bitch becomes <laughs> yeah fucking king of nothing uh-huh well, um yeah we well, can get into that in another episode true yeah we're gonna do that in another episode because i still have some aggression against that fucking ending you should because jeez um I had no reason to watch it. I could have said no. Mm-hmm. But I fucking dug myself. We were going to go back. I was like, oh, we're going to watch Logan. We're going to pick something from my collection. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, there's this new Netflix movie. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Anyway, we're not talking about Tall Girl is now banned from the show. We'd never have to talk about it ever again. Okay? Don't fucking ask for it. <laughs> I'll kill you. Yeah. Number two is 1917. It's about World War One. That movie is literally in one whole take. Really? Yes. Well, like, they had to hide some hide some cuts in there, you know? Yeah. It's like something brushes past the camera. Mm-hmm. Tommen is in it from Game of Thrones. Yeah. He's one of the main characters. Spoilers for 1917. He dies. But he's our main character, and he dies halfway again. through. He a- dies again. again, yes. Does he kill himself this time, or does he <gasps> get shot? Oh, my God. Richard Madden is in it. Rob Stark. And he's in it. When he's in it, I cried. Because of Rob Stark. You kidding me? I really did like Rob Stark. It was sad. Tommen and um, Rob Stark were brothers in this movie. And when Tommen died, the main character had to go tell him that his brother was dead. And he just starts tearing up. And I'm like, no! Rob Stark! I was sad. Yeah. And Benedict Cumberbatch is in it, but he's barely in it. Doctor Strange. He is Doctor Strange. True. And then my number one movie of the year is a Korean movie called Parasite. Okay. It is awesome. I North can't tell South you. South Korea. South Korea. Okay, good. 
obviously. They don't. North Korea doesn't I have movies. Want you fucking brainwash. <laughs> That'd be rage. hilarious. <laughs> um, I I'm not gonna tell you anything about Parasite. Just go watch it. It has subtitles. You have to yeah. read the movie, but it's amazing. Perfect movie. Everyone should go see it. I loved it. Yeah. What about you, Arvin? Um. So I also have my top ten list. My movies were more mainstream, which kind of makes me feel bad. That's okay. Um, What's number ten? I kind of just ranked everything the way I saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, just everything I saw. So there's 17 total. Okay. Well, let's just let's just do the top 10. Top 10? Yeah. All right. Uh, number 10 was Good Boys. We saw that together, right? Yep. That it was, was good. It was good. It was a good comedy. Yeah. Good Boys, yeah. I hate you. <laughs> All right. What else? Um, number 9 was uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Okay. Um, we're going to have to have an episode where we talk about just the Rise of Skywalker. I just bought boxing gloves, so we're good to have that. Okay, debate. good. Okay, good. Next episode. Um... You have at number eight Shazam. Shazam uh, was oh my god that came out last year. Yeah, it feels like it was like three years it ago. It was early, dude. It was. That was um, a good movie. Yeah. Uh, number seven is Spider Man Far From Home. Um, oh, I loved that movie. My yeah. favorite Spider Man movie, right there. Um, number six is Avengers Endgame with the extra content. Well, that doesn't really count. Okay, well it's then. the same movie. Well, then the other one is Captain Marvel, which I gave a seven out of ten. Okay, so that's number ten. Yeah. Okay. Kind of SJWE. Yeah, it was. Boring plot. Okay, what else? We'll talk about... We have to dedicate a segment of our next episode to Brie Larson. <laughs> Brie Larson <laughs> I have segment. some words for her. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, we just... Yeah, that, we could do that. That'd be funny. Um, number five is John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum. Uh, Grant and I did... Wait, part... Uh, oh, it was number five. Okay, I thought you said John Wick, Part 5. It's like, what? Yeah. What about it? Um, we, me, Grant, and Jesse actually marathon all three Wick movies. Yep. Then we got Jimmy John's, and yep. they tried to poison me, because I'm allergic to That was to hilarious. <laughs> they tried to kill me. Yep. I'm pissed off at Jimmy John's. Mm-hmm. You fucking toast your sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Always. I don't know. I don't know. Sandwich one of fucking one. What else? Toy Story 4 is my number four. That was a good Ironic. movie. Oh, it is. Ironic. Uh, number three is Joker. Very good movie. Don't care. Shut up. Don't care. My list. I know. I understand. Uh, number two What's is Dragon than... Ball. Oh, okay. Dragon Ball. And then number one is it's Avengers. Avengers. Okay. Avengers Endgame. That's not a bad list. Yep. I only have a problem with one thing on that list. If you say fucking Joker, I'm going to punch you with a brick. This is going to bring us to our next segment where we talk about the Joker, everybody. Welcome to a seg- segment called Two Friends Fight. Yeah. Uh, where we basically put on boxing gloves and try to fight each other in our car. Mm-hmm. Um, the Joker is overrated. Most overrated movie of the year. It's the Black Panther of 2019. I disagree to an extent. Okay. what? Let's talk about Joker thoroughly, okay? Yeah. If you guys don't want to listen to us talk about Joker uh, and the Oscars. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh, skip to this time code. If you don't want to hear us talk about the Joker, it um, doesn't matter. Spoilers. Yeah, if you haven't seen Joker, we're talking about the whole movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, the Joker is about Arthur Fleck. He has a mental disorder. He, a Fleck. He, Affleck. Yeah, I get it. I, I, Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> but he has, like, a laughing disorder where he just laughs for no reason. Um, okay, what was what what was the symbolism of this movie? What makes this movie genius, as other people say it is? Well, first of all, I don't think the movie's exactly genius. It's okay. obviously just a really great film, in my opinion. Why is it great? It's... It just tells, like... For me, it's, like, about society and how, like, it's, everybody's an asshole nowadays. We live in a society. You're one of those people. Like, we... No, I'm saying, like, okay. society can be better is what I'm saying. Okay. And I think that's what the Joker's trying to say, essentially. Like, Is that the society is garbage? Yeah. Well, where where's the, like... Like, besides... That, if that, is that the message of the movie? No, I don't think that's the message. What's the message of the movie? To be honest, I haven't watched it in, like... Because there is no message. There isn't, like... Joker... There is, like, obviously, like... Arthur Fleck stumbles his way into causing a re- rebellion, which causes Robert De Niro to die, because he shoots him in the head, and also the Waynes to die, and then... And his mom. What? And his mom. Yeah, he kills his mom. Oh, yeah, well, well, he did that. Yeah. But I'm talking about the revolution. Oh, yeah. So, like... But there was also that one guy on the subway who the cop shot. Oh, yeah, that's true. But, like, the whole thing about Joker 
is that rich people are bad. That's the message of the movie that I took away. What else? Is that all you're trying to say right here? Rich people are bad? Because that's like, okay, they have a lot of money and some people don't have money. That's it? That's really all we're doing? I don't think the... I think I kind of agree with like what you said. The movie doesn't really have a message. It's just a movie for the sake of being a movie. I mean, don't get me wrong. Walking Phoenix, Walking Phoenix gave a was... really great performance. Yeah. He's not Heath Ledger. Mm -hmm. Heath Ledger will always be the best. But I know when we first saw this movie together, I said it was hard to tell who was better. Yeah. But in retrospect, Heath Ledger has a plan. He is smart. He doesn't Arthur have a Fleck. Plan. He flat out says he doesn't have a okay, plan. Okay, he doesn't have a plan, but he has, like, um, what's the word? Um, contingencies. Contingencies. He has contingencies and he's smart. Yeah. Arthur Fleck is an idiot. He is not smart. He doesn't know what he's doing. He was literally about to kill himself and then he decides, oh, I'm going to kill Robert De Niro. Yeah, because, like. He doesn't act like the Joker. He acts opinion, like, like Walking Phoenix who went crazy. Like, in my opinion, this is how I see it. Joker is a movie about, uh, like, halfway through, it's just about a guy who's living his last day on Earth. He doesn't care anymore. And that's what drives him further into insanity. And then he's on the show, and then he reads his quote from his joke book, like, I hope my death makes more sense than my life. Mm -hmm. Which is a joke we find out that he wrote yeah. um, in hopes of getting a laugh. But um, he just decides, if I'm going to die, I might as well take some people with me. That's the way, kind of, I see it. Hmm. And by then the he just doesn't die. He's saved by his goons, or, yeah. like, his followers now. Which are all of Gotham, apparently. Which is... Or, like, like a lot of Gotham. The less fortunate in Gotham, yeah. I really say. Yeah, that's fair. And, yeah, he's just trying to live out as his last le his last day as good as he can, in my opinion. And if it's not today, then it's not tomorrow. Hmm. And it could be tomorrow. Now, the question yeah. is... Was this movie more overrated than Black Panther, or was Black Panther more overrated? In my opinion, Black Panther was way more overrated. Mostly because they brought in a whole race thing, like, oh, black people are finally getting a representation of movie. They've gotten plenty of representation. But what, anything as mainstream as, like, a Black Panther, though? I don't know. We don't need to talk about, like, that whole situation, but, like... Next episode. Yeah, for next episode. But for me, I think Joker had less substance than Black Panther. Because Black Panther actually had, like, Killmonger actually wanted to do something. Yeah. He actually had a message he was trying to convey, and he actually had a mission. Arthur Fleck does not. Yeah, because that's just, not who the Joker is. He doesn't, com he doesn't convey messages or have a plan. True, but, like... He's just an agent of chaos. That's his whole shtick. Yeah. But I don't think it's Oscar worthy. I don't think it's an Oscar worthy movie, in my opinion. Um, I, I think, think Black Panther is more. I think ultimately, if it wins Best Film, that's a bit of a stretch. I think so too. But if I will riot. wins Best Actor, I'm perfectly fine with that because he did. Yeah. He was basically born to play the Joker. I'm gonna have to agree. I'm gonna have to agree with you. Now let's talk about the Oscars. They're tomorrow. Yep. Oscars are tomorrow. Okay. We're gonna do Best Picture. No, let's do Best Picture last. Okay. Yep. Our predictions for who we want and who we think will win. Yep. Okay. Best actor. Um, you've only seen... You only know Walking... And Adam Driver. And Adam Driver. Um, so, yeah. We got Adam Driver, Antonio Banderas, Walking Phoenix for Joker, Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Jonathan Price for Two Popes. I've seen all these movies. I have not seen Two Popes. I've seen that one scene that everybody talks about, A Marriage Story. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, basically... So the only one you've seen is Joker. So you're yeah. giving it to Joaquin. Uh, I've also I wanted to see Once Upon a Time. My my prediction is this: I think it's going to come down to uh, Joaquin and Adam Driver. For me, I want Adam Driver to win a whole lot. He was so good in Marriage Story. Yeah. But it's going to be Joaquin. That's like I really feel like Joaquin deserves to win for his performance. And that's pro. And I did watch the scene, the big scene from Marriage Story. And oh yeah. Hats off to Adam Driver. If he wins, I'll also be very happy. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I really want Joaquin to win. Okay, that's in fair. In my opinion. Um, yeah, that's fair. So Joaquin's going to make that one. Best Actress. Um, we got Charlize Theron for Bombshell, Renee Zellweger, Judy, Cynthia Erivo for Harriet, Scarlett Johansson, Marriage Story, and Sirius Ronan for Little Women. You haven't seen any of these movies. 
No. Correct? Okay. For me, I'm going to have to give it to Scarlett Johansson. She was great in Marriage Story. Yeah. Okay. We're both agreed, even though you haven't seen it. Best Supporting Actor, Anthony Hopkins, Two Popes. Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Joe Pesci and Al Pacino from The Irishman. And Tom Hanks and A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. I've seen all these. And Tom Hanks is the winner here for yeah. me. He was amazing. He played Mr. Rogers. Yeah. He was great. Um, best Supporting Actress, uh, Kathy Bates, Richard Jewell, uh, Margot Robbie, Bombshell, Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit, Florence Pugh, Little Woman, and Laura Dern, Marriage Story. Laura Dern, who was Haldo in The Last Jedi. I'm going to go with um, Scarlett Johansson again. I have to give it to Florence Pugh. Uh, she is one of my favorite actresses right now. She was really good in Little Women. Um, best Director, Todd Phillips, Joker, Bong John ho for Parasite, Martin Scorsese, Irishman, Sam Mendes, 1917, and Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, so for me, it's kind of like a three-way tie because Tarantino, obviously, is such a talented mm-hmm. director. Um, Todd Phillips did one of the one of my favorite movies of the year, mm-hmm. and um, Martin Scorsese, obviously. Oh yeah, that yeah. I have to say, Irishman. I didn't like it that much. Really? I give it an eight out of ten. I still have it's yet to good, see it. but I don't think it's as good as his other movies have been. Too long, too long Just, and boring. Can we take a break and talk about how absurdly long this man's truck is? Oh my gosh, that thing's giant. Anyway, um, for me. Best director, I have to give it to Sam Mendes because he had to direct a whole movie where it's basically just one shot yeah, for one 1917. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I really want to see 1917. It's it's amazing. Uh, best music, uh, Star Wars, 1917, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story. What do you think? The, the Star Wars score is obviously iconic, but did you even always, notice it in The Rise of Skywalker? There's obvious. There's always one song that really sticks out to me uh-huh. in each movie. And I couldn't find that in Rise of Skywalker. Like, obviously, nothing against John Williams. He's one of the most talented people in our time. Mm. And uh, he just, I just don't think it's worthy yeah. of the Oscar. Cause Me neither. Honestly, I'm going Joker or 1917. I can agree with that, yeah. 1917 was really good. Now let's just go into Best Picture, okay? All right. Uh, best Picture, I've seen all of these. 1917. Ford vs. Ferrari, Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Parasite, The Irishman, Little Woman, Jojo Rabbit, and Marriage Story. Um, for me, it's going to be like a three-way tie mm-hmm. between what I'm predicting. It's going to be 1917, Joker, or um, Jojo Rabbit, or Marriage Story. So four-way. For me, what I want to win is Parasite and 1917. I'll be good with either of those winning, but mm-hmm. Parasite was my favorite movie of the year and it was so good I have to give it to Parasite um yeah none of the other movies are especially Joker that does not belong there in my opinion so yeah I'm going Parasite those are our Oscar predictions and by tomorrow we'll probably be wrong with all of them yep anyway anyway I think that's all we got right is that everything um yeah I think that's do you have anything else to add um The world's falling apart. Take the message from this fucking channel. Be like me and Grant. Don't give a shit about politics. Don't choose a side. Just vote for who you vote for. And don't fucking talk about it to people. Wait. Because people are shit. Arvin, who do you want to be president of the United States? Don't fucking care. I don't discuss (laughs) politics. Oh, yeah. We we just learned from Birds of Prey that Harley Quinn voted for Bernie Sanders. Yeah. (laughs) I forgot about that. That was hilarious. That was my favorite part of the movie. Probably because he wants to legalize pot. She did cocaine in this movie. She did do cocaine in this like, movie. Like, inadvertently, she didn't, like, go out of her way to do it, but she did do it. Yeah. She's and then she it. had, like, laser focus. It's true. I didn't really feel like the action was uh, very good. I, I personally have never tried cocaine. Uh, if it ever beca- a drug. If it ever becomes legal, feel free to do it if you want. But I'm pretty sure that's not how cocaine works. Yeah, I don't... If it's, like, powder... I don't know if you can just... Or, like, smoke. No, I mean, like, you have smoke. laser fact... Uh, oh, I don't, I don't know about that. Doing it. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I'm I only sure. sell it. I don't do it. What? what? <laughs> anyway, uh, I think next episode we're going to talk about Star Wars. Star Wars? Is that okay with you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk about the future Star Wars, what we thought of Rise of Skywalker, uh, what Colin Trevero's version of Episode Nine was. Yep. What it could have been. Uh, Brie Larson. Is she in Star Wars? 
she could be. She she might be. Yeah, I think she actually might be. And then like mm-hmm. some new movies. I don't know. Um, apparently, uh, for like a live action Ahsoka, um, Kevin Feige is looking at her. Oh. Um. <gasps> They're gonna ruin my favorite female character. Anyway, this just is found me on the side of the road. You're like, oh, oh yeah. get in the car. Yeah, so I guess we're gonna uh, do a podcast. After this podcast, uh, you have to go back to your um, my home. Yeah, yes. your home in the alley. Yep. In the uh, cardboard box. Yeah. Uh, sadly, uh, community college was very tough for me. Yeah. We can do an episode about community. Why it was a genius show. We could. Until it wasn't. We could talk about just like sitcoms and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, uh, um, this has been the first episode of the Punch It Podcast. And if you don't understand why it's called the Punch It Podcast, it's because that's what Han, Han Solo, Solo says in Star Wars. And we're Arvine doing has films. the yeah. two dice from the movies. And that's why it's the logo of our show. Punch it. Like that, yeah. <laughs> anyway, this has been our episode, guys. We'll see you guys in the next episode of the Punch It Podcast. Take Goodbye. everything what we say with a grain of salt. Or if just, you like Tall Girl, you're soft in the fucking head. Yeah, you should not like Tall Girl. Kill yourself. Whoa. Goodbye, guys. You have no taste in film. This is it.